Hey, it's Seth from Screech Size with another important tutorial for beginner and intermediate producers. Now this time let's talk about exporting in Apple Studio and exporting in Edison. Which way is the best, when do you want to use which, and of course how do you do it? So let's jump right in. A while ago I've posted a video about making a hard shot kick tail. However, I didn't show how to export the kick correctly, as someone in the comment section pointed out. Hopefully I pronounced your name correctly, DJ PB Gurjar, but thank you for suggesting this topic. And if you also have a suggestion, don't hesitate and just drop it down below. I make sure to read every single comment. Now let's talk about two of the most common ways to export your sound in Apple Studio. Whether it's a kick, a lead, a snare or even an entire song, doesn't matter. Now sorry for busting this bubble this early, but there is no single best way for exporting. It simply depends on what you're trying to accomplish. And I know it can be confusing, that's why I want to explain when and how to use each. So make sure to watch everything until the end. Method 1. Export in FL Studio. Now the first method is simply exporting your project to a WAV file via FL Studio. You can easily use this method when you want to export your project exactly how it is. Whether it's a song, a snippet or just a sound, it doesn't really matter. So if you don't want to make any modifications, you can simply use the Apple Studio export function. Now, many of you guys already know how that works, but stay with me for a minute, else you will miss the other strategy that you came here for. But for those of you who don't know, here's how to export an Apple Studio. Before you export anything, make sure to select the part you wish to export. That is only if you want to export a part of your project. So for example, if you have a sound on the playlist, select the sound first by right clicking and dragging. This way you can highlight the part you want to render. And thereby also select the song mode in Apple Studio so it knows you want to export something from the playlist. However, if you want to export the sound from a pattern, just select the correct pattern first, for example pattern 1. And thereby select pattern mode in Apple Studio so it knows you want to export something from the channel rack. Now when you have selected the clip from the playlist or a sound from the channel rack, you can export it by clicking file in the Apple Studio menu, select export and click WAV file. Now a window will pop up so you can locate where to store the file on your hard drive. So just select your preferred folder and click save. Another window will appear with all the rendering options. And the main one to focus on is the output format. Make sure it says WAV. And if that's the case, move on by selecting your preferred bit depth. For example 16 bits. Also you may want to check the quality tab and set the resampling option to a high value, for example 512 point sync. However I doubt you will hear that much of a difference. All set, just press start and your project will be rendered to a WAV file and stored on your hard drive. And that's actually it as far as this method goes. And if you are not a beginner you already knew about this. But if you are new to FL Studio, the best place to start is with the FL Studio beginner's guide. Many people have already read it, but if you don't, I'll put the link in the description box below and I highly recommend following it. Method 2. Record and export with Addison. Now the second method is slightly more advanced as it involves recording via Addison, but it's still a piece of cake. So you can use the Addison method when you want to make some modifications before you save your sample. So if you want to edit your sound before saving, simply go with Addison. But how does that work? Let me show you. First, open Addison by clicking View in the Apple Studio menu and select Mixer. On the Mixer, select any of the tracks, for example the Master, and then click on an empty slot and select Addison from the list of effects. Addison will show up and now it's time to record your sound. And to do that, press the record button in Addison, but press the play knob in Apple Studio. And Addison will now record your clip. But once you have what you need, press the stop button in Addison, and this will leave you with a rough recording of your project. Now the power of Addison comes into play with all the different ways you can edit your recording. Though I'm not going to explain all the different options Addison provides, there are just too many. But I will simply show you a few essential ones that I use when I record my samples this way. So let's say you have recorded the hard sock kick for example and you want to export it correctly. Let me share three effective tips you can use to create a perfect sample. One. Delete everything left and right to clean up the recording so the exact sample is visible with no empty spaces. And this will make your sample start and end directly. So just select the empty parts by clicking and dragging and press delete to remove them. And if you want to be scientific about it, zoom in deeply to be perfect. 2. Normalize the recording. 
This will give your sample maximum loudness and simply click the wrench icon and click normalize. And that should do the trick. 3. Optionally create a fade in and or a fade out. These fades can give your sample a natural attack or release time. However, doing this depends hugely on the type of recording or effect you wish to accomplish. But still, let me show it. Just select a part of your recording, click the wrench icon and click on either fade in or fade out. Now, personally, I use the fade out of about 200 milliseconds or so for hardstyle kicks. Feel free to explore all the other options Edison has to offer because they are awesome. But for now, let's say the sample is ready for export. This is how you can save it. Select the save icon on the floppy disk in Addison and click save sample as. Now a window will pop up where you can select the right folder on your hard drive. And when you have selected the right location, click save and your cleaned up recording has now been saved as a tight sample. And that's that, your sample is now ready for use. So in summary, export via Addison if you want to modify your sound before saving and export via Apple Studio if you want to render your sound or song as is. That should answer the question and if you have more topics you want me to cover, just comment down below. I try to read every single comment so don't hold back. If you are new to Screech House, this is the time to click the subscribe button so you will never miss a video. And don't forget to look in the description box for the powerful Apple Studio beginners guide. Go ahead right now and you will hear from me very soon.